Good morning, everyone. This is Chaitali Bag from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. In Women's Week, ADU is taking a little detour from its ode to women in aerospace and defense to introduce you all to an achiever who has taken nearly 200 interviews to keep the platform of Indo-Japan Association not only strong, but also stable. Nupur Tiwari, a woman who combated her circumstances to achieve all that she has been able to. Hers is a story of trials, tribulations, and triumph. And to take the story forward is our very own team of women achievers of ADU. Welcome, Nupur, to the ADU's chat room. Joining us also are editor Sangeeta Saxena, another woman who has both will and power to defeat all odds. Ladies, welcome to both of you. Thank you so much, Atali. Thank you very much. I mean, that was really nice huh, in the end. I always thought that, you know, what we were doing was very normal and there's nothing special about what we were doing. But I think that's a great one to have, you know. And uh, to welcome Nupur to ADU's chat room, it's just wonderful to have you. Very, very rarely do we have women. And uh, it's a wonderful feeling. We have also a special section on women in aerospace and defense. But, you know, when I was going through your, uh, you know, a lot of things have been written for our audience's, uh, you know, information about Nupur on the you know, media, in the media and on the Google. It's so, I, you know, when I was going through it, I realized that you had a achievement of having done more than 180 interviews, which is, which is very journalistic for us journalists. So we will begin with that achievement of yours. So how did you manage to do so many interviews? So uh, first of all, definitely, you know, thank you so much for having me today. And the two lovely ladies, I'm welcomed by two lovely ladies. Such an honor. You know, I feel, I feel so honored to be a woman and welcomed by uh, two lovely ladies. Because always, you know, we have the, that kind of concept that women really don't uh, embrace other women. So here is totally different thing is happening. So congratulations to three of us for having this show. And thank you, for, thank you so much for having me. So when it comes to your questions, how did I do that, actually? Um, I, uh, I always wanted to do something uh, which uh, nobody had done. That is, you know, in Hindi, it is called Kira, maybe, you know, something like, uh, I always, I'm, I'm kind of, you can call it a bit different, you can call it weird, you can call it like, uh, she's uh, odd, whatever, like, I really embrace all the words. So yes, I always wanted to do something which nobody had done. And, um, you know, as they say, like, if you really want something, this universe really listens to you. So this is the way it started. And I just started it uh, during the Corona period, I always wanted to do but the time was not perfect, the time was not right, because I was also traveling, I'm, a, I'm an inner transformation and mindfulness coach. So I do travel for my session for universities and corporates. So then, um, then the, when the Corona happened, the world really became like totally everybody just stayed at home and the depression and everything. So I started with the meditation session. Then after that, the, this idea I said this is I always wanted to do to motivate people let me just start with motivation so and I started doing those interviews uh, just you know without any much plan without anything like I'm launching something you no know, uh, the people I know I just contacted them this is a thing I want to do and started and eventually I just kept adding one by one and and it has become almost 200 now 187 188 it's going to be and the most important thing that I added the uh, one more section which is Indian Army actually I'm I'm kind of I kind of worship people who are courageous you know brave people I'm I like I'm I'm a admirer kind of brave man women definitely and uh, so that was another thing I wanted to add so but uh, nobody from my family uh, from uh, army and I don't have army background so how to start so that was another struggle so then I, uh, the you know, through the whoever I took before the interview, I contacted them if they know anyone from Army, and that is the way it started. And that is the thing I'm very passionate about: listening to all those Army stories. Why they did join? Why did they join Army? And what kind of struggle they had? What kind of fun they had? So I'm kind of you know listening to they're telling their stories, and I'm enjoying 
enjoying listening to them. So that is the way it has become 187 and it is going to be 188 this week. I think that's just wonderful. It's so motivating to hear. We are two women who also who are very fond of interviewing. And, uh, you know, we also have, or every woman I feel has a story to how she reached the level of achievement she's sitting on. All of us have it. Now, I just wanted to understand from you, uh, was this thing inherent in you? Or uh, as a child, did the school teach you when you went to college, when you came into corporates? How did it come to you that you wanted to speak and you wanted to uh, interview and uh, you wanted to meet people, meet new people, give them motivational lectures? Because, you know, it many a times there are people who, you know, are in their dumps and they want somebody to just tell them that, okay, get up, life is great, you know? So how did it come to you? Is it is it inherent in you or you developed it? Actually, you know, I believe today, <clears throat> You might not agree. Many people would say what she is saying. I believe that everybody is born with some purpose, actually. And uh, that is eventually some of us, we realize it. Some of us just, you know, don't realize and just leave uh, our life unconsciously, you know. So um, that is the consciousness is very important. And that consciousness, actually, I'm I'm from, uh, I'm not a, not from very, uh, city i'm not from not from city i didn't go to any um that great school or you know uh, where you i could have had that background no and i i really don't have anything any regret or um you know i don't think no i should have had that i should have gone to really good school no you know the life i had and i really i really feel that life i needed to be me today if I didn't have that life, I wouldn't be today who I am. So I think uh, that was the my background. And I feel that uh, the values my parents gave me, the traditional values, you know, uh, loving people or respecting people, a lot of, lot of traditional. India is, uh, you know, culturally so rich, actually. And uh, we just were you know, the oldest civilization with so much great philosophy we have, which actually, unfortunately, we Indians don't know. So those values since my childhood, my parents gave me and I'm very grateful to them I'm, I was born and raised uh, I was raised very traditionally actually doing yoga and mantra and all those things I think those also you know gave me great um, sense of achieving the thing I really want to achieve and um, I never wanted to settle down so that was you know everybody has uh, some negative and positive sides everything has negative and positive so it's up to us which one actually we want to embrace which one actually we want um, to um, focus you know in, you know today if if the day is done the half day we did not do anything that maybe half day we still have maybe if, if we can use five hours we can do a lot of things and the, like, tomorrow we can do the rest of the thing think we can think that way or we can think that it's our half day is gone i cannot do anything you know it's gone that whole day is gone so the two kind of thoughts are there so it's like half empty and you know half full it's kind of it's kind of a concept so this is the way i i i felt that i have a purpose of being here uh, in this planet and being who i am and i have to achieve something in life i don't know what i have to achieve actually this is um this is again my background because my from my background nobody's going out and working and nobody's going to planning for any um you know i have to achieve that because we were quite a wealthy family and we had everything and we nobody really walked outside from my family so those those things this competitive thing we didn't have in our family so that, but uh, I, I was very different. I was like, I never told anyone because I was really an introvert, introvert. And uh, today I'm talking in front of you. I don't know where it came from. I even couldn't speak in front of my teachers. You know, uh, I still remember when I was in, uh, in my college, then my ma'am used to call my ma name, Nupur, and I used to say, so very quietly, yes, ma'am, you know. So people used to just look back maybe and say, who is this tall girl and just a very <laughs> quiet voice kind Kind of. So I never had any self-esteem that was missing in me. I never had that self-esteem that, but that, um, 
thing that I really want to do something in my life that was there. So I didn't know either I will be really inspiring people or not, but I wanted to make life, my, make my own life fulfilling one. That was definitely my purpose. So, so from there, I broke a lot of norms, a lot of rules of uh, my family, society and everything. And, um, you know, when you are coming from a small town or village, there is a um, kind of, you don't no, you you're not you're not speaking English, right? I I I only have one language I knew that was Bengali, and uh, so it's it's a middle class thing in India, I guess. If you're not speaking you know English, you are not considered elite or you are not considered kind of educated in India. That was the thing. I think that that again, I I feel like somewhere someone is working, you know. So I'm in Japan, so everyone speaks Japanese. There is not much role in you know, English here. So it is, um, so that time also, you know, cultural, that's why I say that people only, when the empowerment happened, it's not only financial empowerment, you go through a lot of emotional struggle, you go through a lot of social struggle. So we have to have this empowerment, social empowerment, and the emotional empowerment also. So I had to go through a lot of emotional struggle, like emotional means who I am like not see the people are speaking using totally different language people are totally like i i used to feel odd i'm kind of um you know people the girls are wearing different kind of out, outfit they're uh, talking and using different kind of language like uh, nobody's even looking at me like i used to feel left out or like who am i kind of that that thing always you know so that thing always you know made me do made me focus on me that this is it's okay uh, this is that is not something for me i have my different goal in life so that is also another thing which added value in my life and from there i the spiritual thing started growing inside me spiritual then the um, definitely i i didn't know where i'll go what i'll do but i left my home against everyone's will i i I just started my corporate life. Then I came to Japan. Then, they, you know, once you get married, you feel like, especially, you know, a few years ago when uh, you are not really, uh, especially country like Japan, and Japan is one dis disadvantage. It doesn't matter whatever you do back home. doesn't matter how much achievement you have back home. Once you are here, if you don't know the local language, and this is totally, the country is not giving you uh, any platform. If maybe you are, you are uh, practicing as a doctor back home but when you are in japan you are totally there is you have to have maybe another degree you have to go to university totally few years you have to invest and then you have to learn the language everything so japan is totally a different country like whatever achievement you had back home here again you have to start from zero so the japan is then that was there but um I, I really enjoyed uh, Japanese life. Like I felt like when I uh, came here, I felt that Japan was calling me. Like this was the country I was waiting for, the freedom, sense of freedom, sense of purpose. I wouldn't say sense of purpose. I That time I realized because I felt sense of freedom was very strong that time. Like I'm free. I'm free because before that, before coming to Japan, I had to struggle a little, uh, not little, but a lot in corporate in uh, India. I, I I worked really very limited period there, but I had to really struggle. So here the sense of freedom came. And uh, from there, I started enjoying life, you know, like enjoying means working, started enjoying uh, the nature, started enjoying local culture, started enjoying the people's love, started enjoying, you know, the innocence of Japan. So that actually, you know, for time being, I thought that that I lost my that purpose, you know, that I have to do something in life for that time because I was too busy doing uh, things and uh, I would say uh, anything I was doing I was enjoying yeah but uh, then this purpose again came uh, I'm going back to the uh, question 
actually your question because I, I explained where my background a little bit, which actually, because taking interview take, you know, you need a lot of skill, a lot of the interview 187 already, 88 actually already happened. So taking those interviews, I did not take like um, normal interviews. They all are achievers. My, uh, the I'm taking General's interview. I'm taking Anupam Kher's interview. I'm taking Nina Gupta's interview. I'm taking all the achievers interview. So it takes, it needs your self-esteem. It needs a lot of uh, a lot of you know preparation. Also, you need a lot of things. So I don't know. I feel like no, I was not prepared for anything. Definitely, nobody. I know I'm not. Uh, nobody really prepared me for these things. But the universe. I believe that it was the time and it was my turn to that. Uh, this is actually the purpose actually you were looking for and through your work, it's just coming to you. This is this is, this is your time. So just you are here and uh, this is your stage. Take your stage and go for it. I feel that way. Only that is the thing, that is the way I can explain. Right, absolutely wonderful. You've explained it very well. The fact that you've given us a little bit about your background, which is very nice because you know we want to uh, all the women who are listening to us to understand this fact that you know uh, nothing ends you start feeling oh you've got married your life has ended now you don't you won't be able to do what you want to do there is nothing you know you've got then suddenly you feel oh your parents are not letting you do what you want to do so oh life has finished for us no life continues there's you would never know what is the right time and the right place for you right uh, Chetadi is sitting there in uh, Cyprus uh, you know, is also an expat like you. And I'm sure, Shatali, do you have some points you would uh, uh, like to clarify with uh, Nupur? I mean, I think uh, you would be on a better platform to, you know, uh, give a lot of information to a lot of people who are there. And uh, I think, Nupur, uh, we'll ask Shatali to, uh, you know, ask us something, ask you something more. So you go ahead with it, Shatali. Yeah. Nupur, I was hearing all about your background and somewhere I could identify myself with you as well, you know. It was very similar. Yeah, we come from a very ordinary background, a very middle class ordinary background, right? And you have created a platform for yourself, which is, let's say, ordinary to extraordinary. So here I would like to ask you, you, you are an interviewer. You have taken, we, when we started, you told us 187 interviews. And you are an interpreter as well. So these two roles, how do you balance them and which role you feel you are more comfortable in? Actually, uh, I, um, not only these two, I do, I play a few more roles also, actually. So like, um, I mostly these days, uh, I'm an interviewer. Yes, I'm an interviewer because that is my passion. You know, that is actually, that is something I'm doing um, to create a platform for everyone. Like I will, I will give you an example. Like I have a uh, show for women that is on Shakti Women Who Fought Odds. That is only dedicated to women. Why I created that one actually, um, I have just kept that that is, you know, only the Nuputeori show, but I kept I under the Nuputeori show that is different section only for women. Why? Because, you know, I saw my mother and my mother, uh, it was not always, as I said earlier, that people only you don't have to be only financially empowered you have to be like socially you have to be emotionally empowered different kind of empowerment happened actually um so my mother actually she was married when she was 16 and uh, and came from very uh well organized disciplined family and my family was a kind of not so organized like kind of zamindar family and a lot of you know not everyone people are there is someone his head and without his permission and nobody can move kind of thing you know a small girl is coming from there and having the life like you are just um, a difficult and very different and difficult life actually which she was not used to and there you are not getting your husband just beside you because he's too young and he he's not permitted to do a lot of things at that time people used to the guys used to be very shy actually you know being with a uh, wife all the time it's like people will criticize people will and um, a lot of things he had to go through like she had to go through and some sometimes you know she, she needed to they um needs to go to her parents house then for mom for months they 
could not bring her back kind of thing, you know? So, the, you know, the how society works like, oh, maybe they are not going to take her back kind of thing. And a lot of things happened. So those, those um, trauma, emotional trauma also she had to go through. Then uh, the joint family, a lot of things I have observed actually, which I felt since a very childhood that my first response was to take my mother out of it, you know? to give her something which she did not enjoy in her life. Actually, uh, unfortunately, I could not give much because my uh, very early my um, mom expired. So, um, but uh, that was my first, uh, you know, call. Again, uh, of course, I was I was finding my own purpose, but my mother was also one of the part of it. Not my father much. My father was a very happy person. I know he was very happy with everything. Like a bit kind of me. Like he's always a happy person. So I never thought that kind of is a very kind and happy person. So, but the mother, I always for my mom, it was it was always there. So that's why my Sue is dedicated to her and uh, I have taken a lot of interviews a lot of women in interview and I have taken those interviews also were domestic were facing domestic violence you know and uh, that that is also in Japan you know the women came from India and they're having those kind of problems one I had to flee from Japan so those interviews I'm trying to bring them justice through my platform so here is the role of um, the two roles you say a few more roles also are there um, as, I, as I said, inner transformation and mindfulness codes, so yoga also inside there. So few, um, some things I do because the this interview thing, totally my passion, I want to help the society. I want to motivate the society. I, my everything I do, my, I make sure that I'm motivating a few people at least, you know, like seeing me, even though here that uh, even the housewives or the girls are coming from India or any other girls, you know, from different countries, if they can be motivated, like if she, she is doing, why not me? Why not me doing, you know, something like that or different like which I'm passionate about because I don't have any background. Nobody's also um, supporting me here. Anything I'm doing, I'm doing by myself. And this, if I can do differently, someone can do. So that is also another one motivational thing. I really want to motivate the society, especially the women. And uh, this is one. Secondly, uh, the other things, what I do, the... Uh, Yes, uh, interpreter and the, all uh, these things, the inner transformation and mindfulness, that is something also, this is a bit motive, not bit, a lot of motivational, I'm healing people, you know, the people who are really down, who really feel the life is over here. And I'm, if my words are really giving that, that energy and healing, and they're getting motivated to next day to wake up and go to start doing what really they want to do with their lives. So that, that is very rewarding. So I think, um, the each and every role is important. I'm a mother, and uh, I feel like that is also a big job for any mother. Motherhood is awesome, actually, and that is one of the best job. And especially when your uh, kids are becoming after 10, 11, 12, 13, their puberty period, and they are just going through a very different kind of emotional stage. I think as a mother, that is another role also. So that is also another role. So every role has uh, its own responsibility. And uh, but anything I feel like I, I'm not that enlightened, but I feel like a bit definitely I'm enlightened a bit at least that um, I do a lot of things without thinking much because I really want to do those things. And uh, I, I have realized that life, if life is taking you there, giving that experience, it has some significance. It, it definitely, it has some meaning. It will, either it will give you experience or you will learn it from there or it will take you to some different level, definitely. So anything is coming, anything, any experience is coming, just learn from there and uh, just wrap it up or you know if it is you are continuing it's totally fine if it is not just wrap it up with good um, memory and uh, good wrap a beautiful wrap wrapper i would say so every role is very important for me and uh, yeah i i happily i just play those roles and i would love to play more roles too i will pick up some words from whatever you said till now expats being a mother being a woman and motivation. So, uh, Nupur, I'm an expat living in Cyprus for like past nine and a half years now. In fact, I'm out of India from 15 and a half years. I am a mother. I have two daughters. And living here, I have we have a 
good amount of Indian community who have their kids. They struggle with the same thing, you know, the language. Uh, India has so many languages. I mean, we uh, ourselves, like uh, somebody's speaking Marathi, Bengali. So here we teach our kids maybe the mother, mother tongue, the English and the local language. Now, how can we motivate our kids, these expat kids who are living out of country, to take interpreter as, as like maybe a full-time career or something that, uh, what are the skill set they will need to go ahead with this kind of profession? I would like to know this from so, you. Yeah, definitely. This is a very interesting question because, you know, um, our kids definitely, they struggle with these, like, and um, what actually they are going to, sometimes they uh, feel like that we are imposing a lot of things on them also. They feel that way. So um, they can, it is, it is, again, I would say that our time was different. Now the time is totally, the kids are really very much, they are self-conscious. They know what really they want to do. And um, they know their limitation. They know where their uh, strength are, actually. So this is the new generation kids, are the world is open to them, kind of, you know, through internet. And especially after this corona period, actually, the online classes and everything, the world is kind of has become very smaller and smallest, I would say. So here... Um, um, the kids, they know that what really they are passionate about. It's not like our time people used to, the, uh, the uh, you know, our parents used to impose, like, you have to be an engineer or you have to go for that. And sometimes it was it was needed also for uh, finance and families, um, you know, uh, to run the family and, and many things. But um, now when people, uh, kids are abroad, they're quite wealthy. You know, I would say that at least they don't have to think about supporting the family that much. So that is one advantage. The secondly, there's uh, they are in a totally different country, totally in different country. So different country culture. They are um, they're learning a different culture and. Uh, and uh, definitely they know uh, about Western culture, they know about Eastern culture, they're they doing through internet, they know a lot of information today. So here the background and the, they're the basis, based their kind of uh, building that what really they want to do. They already already have, I think two, three, the moment they're, um, you know, uh, they're self-conscious quite, the, I, this is the thing I'm passionate about. So they will choose that thing. Again, if they want to be, Again, that is their choice here. The um, as I mentioned that in a transformation course, the mental mental health is very important. For um, uh, it was important, but we never made it important. Like we never considered it actually important before. Now in these days, actually, this is uh, because of the new era, because of the new age of internet, because of the lot of things. I think and Corona definitely the depression and the mental health is very important, very much. So that is emotional empowerment, I would say. So here the kids, I think they are very intelligent. They they are they know that what they are going to pick up our role as a as a parent i would say to support them to count to do the counseling that what really you want to do are you sure you want to do that and what what actually if you want to go for it what you have to prepare and what kind of preparation we need, what kind of finance we need, where you have to go. So those things we can help them with. Otherwise, I think um, if they want to be, they're very sure about it. The, today's generation is very sure about it. They want to be. Our role would be doing the counseling with them. Quite frequently, we should do the counseling because, uh, well, you know, I, I still remember when I, uh, here in Japan, I, I lived in different parts of Japan. So when I was in Kyushu, it's a, uh, it's a in Western Japan, actually. So there are daycare center, totally Japanese daycare center. My daughter was one year, I started working. So one year she used to go. And um, actually, uh, they, they used to just let them do by one year. I was Indian, I was an Indian mother. So I was very, no, 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 my daughter cannot do. She's just only one year. She just started, you know, walking. And no, she will do by herself. Let her do. So this, you know, that's independent that, yes, you can do it. You can make your own decision. You can just, uh, you can eat even when falling. It's totally fine. Let her do it. You know, they used to just say, you go home or you go to your work early. You don't have to be here. Just let her do it. If she is eating even one spoon, it's totally fine. She will eat dinner at home. 
<laughs> you know, feed at dinner. So those things I think are very important. Let them take their decision. We can just only guide them. And uh, as I said, the mental health um, is very important. So doing the counseling and uh, again, I'm going back to my the daycare days. Actually, um, I learned from there that when your kids are with other kids, you don't know what they're going through. You know, a lot of mental, like somebody's bullying, somebody's, which maybe your daughter is not um, extrovert, introvert, a lot of in, thing inside her or he, him. So our duties are definitely to check with them whether they are okay, especially mentally, and talking with them, making sure they're totally fine, and knowing what re they want to do and doing the counseling. I think that would be great for today's generation. Otherwise, intelligence, yeah, they're full of, you know, intelligence. So that would be my answer here. Great. Thank you so much, Nupur. Ma'am, over to you again. Right. Uh, you know, Nupur, uh, Japan as a country has gone through very heavy times. You know, you had two atomic bombings, which actually was a very black chapter in the world history. But uh, tell me one thing, you know, even today when we go to cover shows in Japan, we do see these, you know, uh, people who are still under, you've been so many generations have come since then, but you still see these people reacting outside the show venue, saying that, you know, do not sell arms, do not sell, do not do this. We have borne the brunt of it. Mothers do not want their children to die. Now, these sort of slogans, these sort of posters we, see, we saw when we went to Japan for the show. I want to understand from you that uh, in a country which has been, you know, psychologically very much, uh, you know, down after a thing like what happened in 1945, uh, have, have the generations been tuned mentally? Have they been taught mentally? to uh, be against uh, war in any form and uh, be against, uh, you know, the presence of military in the region in any form? Yeah, it's a, it's a very important question, actually. And uh, people when uh, India or other things, they, say, they really uh, tell me you are in Japan, they're really nationalist. So I need to make them understand that, no, things changed in Japan actually and uh, whatever the reason uh, we are um, whatever the reason behind it but yes after 1945 japan realized especially after tokyo trial and um, what happened so japan realized that uh, it did not take us anywhere so you know uh, like they don't talk about pearl harbor they don't talk about uh, they talk about um, different Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They pray on those two, two days, but they talk, don't talk about why it happened. They don't say that, yes, they killed us. They don't use those words. They very, very diplomatic way they use those words. So I have, you know, I, I, I'm very fortunate, you know, to live in different parts of Japan. And I have taught in Japanese school, almost 38 schools, actually. I know uh, many schools as a freelancer, I have taught on 38 schools. So I know, and I have came, I have uh, come across, met many principles of, you know, 38 skill, 38 principles. So I could see that some of them are really very diplomatic. They really don't want to talk to them, but the moment, uh, I go a little bit farther, like uh, a bit countryside. I see I met many principals who really take their children to the, um, you know, a mountain. And then just so this is us. This is Japan. And you know what happened with Japan? They really want to teach the real history of Japan, you know, like uh, what happened, then the bomb, uh, you know, Hiroshima and Nagasaki happened. But they cannot, but it is not really um, allowed. <laughs> it is not allowed. So Japanese are very much used to apologizing. Said, so let it be, let it, you know, let it be the way it is, peace. We really want, like in Japanese, this is called Heiba. So they just say, Japan is Heiba no Kuni. Japan is a very peaceful country. We don't want any more war we don't want anything like that so that's why the nationalists who are nationalists definitely they are not 
on the forefront. They are not. There are definitely many people who th think differently, but uh, the mainstream, I would say, they are more into keeping the peace alive. They just don't want to go for any of those kind of things. So that's why even even to China, you know, you will see the many times the Prime Minister Abe apologized. You know, many times apologized, and China was kind of heavy. You know, it was not needed, but he he apologized. He just say, okay, if my apology is making them happy, okay, let me do it. It's kind of so that's why in Japanese culture it is uh, so much even in corporate culture and everywhere. So apology is saying sorry is so common here that okay if it is keeping the peace it's okay let it be. So yes, you are very right. Whenever these kind of things happen, um, there are slogans. There are a lot of people are protesting. And um, even yesterday also, uh, when I was coming home at the station, that someone was saying that we, even the same thing was there, that we don't want war, the, we have made the country like Japan, it's the best country in the world, we have peace with the people are wonderful. Yes, I agree with them. But um, about the war, I, I don't know um, about that is not actually my uh, thing to uh, you know decide, or we cannot decide things, this is definitely, but uh, um, yes, after second 1945, Japan is um, more about peace than the war. Yeah. But that, that is wonderful. I think we had a lovely discussion. And uh, you know, it tells us so much about the sort of platform uh, women like you are creating in foreign lands, where two, we are also two very friendly countries, India and Japan. We've had very strong ties, very strong relationships. And uh, it's always wonderful, you know, to have such sort of discussions where we feel that, you know, the platforms should remain stable. And I think that is uh, one of those best things of uh, which comes out of today's discussion, that uh, we not only create platforms for ourselves, we also create platforms for our future generations. Exactly. Which is very, which is very important. So Nupur, thank you very much. When we started the show, we really didn't know how to say, uh, you know, hello in the Japanese. And I know only one word, Ohio Gusaimis, which I believe is good morning. And but both of us, Chitali and I know how to say sayonara. So, you know, for now, I will say sayonara to you. Thank you very much for this wonderful discussion. And I'm taking you back to our studios in Cyprus. Chitali is waiting for us to wind up. Thank you so much, Nupur. As I said in the beginning, yes, it's we we are women, we are going to achieve something, excluding defeating all the odds. You have done it for exactly. yourself. Of course, Sangeeta Ma'am, everybody knows she has she has the strength, she has the willpower to defeat all the odds. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Nupur. We will surely meet in some platform somewhere, definitely very soon. Looking forward to do that. And um, looking forward to have more sessions with you in future. Thank you so much. Thank you have so much for having me. It was really wonderful discussion and uh, meeting two lovely ladies was kind of bonus. So that bonus is, you know, more, more sweet than the <laughs> real thing. So we always yes, absolutely... build up relationships like that. <laughs> and I'm great, sure this will great. continue. Uh, of course, of course, it will continue. And uh, definitely, thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to meet you all, you know, thank to you. in person. Definitely. definitely. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. And have Bye. a very good, very good day. I think it is now yes. two, three something in India. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah, right. And, and it's evening for you, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Right.